Hello, dears, and welcome to Al Husseini Virtual Lab Pathology Talks, Tips, and Practical Tips. Today, I'm going to share with you an interesting and rare case of a breast ischwannoma. So this is a 51-year-old female patient who presented with a chronic breast pain and right-sided breast mass of one year duration. On examination, the mass was extremely mobile and the two by two centimeter uh, in size. The ultrasound showed a round hypoechoic mass with cystic component in the right breast and a, um, an ultrasound guided biopsy was followed by resection of the mass. And as you can see, perhaps once you see the image from the low power, you would really jump out of your place because this is a quite unexpected. We can see beautifully the palisading the, uh, uh, of Antony A and the hypocellular areas of Antony B. And that would really be very much um, a suggestive of Schwannoma. But please be reminded that Schwannoma is usually well circumscribed. And this is why the mass was really on examination, uh, well circumscribed and mobile and, ultra and on ultrasound was also well circumscribed. And again, another high power magnification of the uh, edge or the margin of the tumor where it is well circumscribed and it is surrounded by a fibrous capsule. In this area, if you look into the lesion in this area, there isn't much of the palisading that we've encountered in the first slide. And then back to the beautiful palisades where we have really the palisading of the nuclei and then we have the fibrillary uh, hypocellular areas in between and another beautiful high power magnification with the fibrillarity that is encountered commonly in neuronal tumors. And then we have the palisading of the nuclei. Again, some areas would be devoid of this palisading and would show perhaps some nuclear atypia, which would which is very common actually in Schwannoma, especially long-standing Schwannoma, or sometimes what we call the ancient Schwannoma. Please be reminded that there were no mitotic figures encountered and no evidence of necrosis. Pleomorphism is a feature of a type of uh, of degenerating um, uh, um, uh, or atypical ischwannomas, but this would not really upgrade the tumor. It remains ischwannoma and it remains a, a benign tumor. Now, it's important. Uh, there are several tips that we have to consider. First of all, that we have really to make sure that this is not a metaplastic carcinoma, because of that cytokeratins have to be performed and a panel, a large panel of cytokeratins. So we have to do more than one pan cytokeratin. We have to do K, uh, CAM 5.2 and we have to do uh, EMA or even P63 to make sure that this is not a low grade metaplastic spindle cell carcinoma. It's, uh, it's the single most important a part of the differential diagnosis. The other differential diagnosis would be phyllodes tumor. So we have to make sure that there are no epithelium really entrapped within the, uh, the lesion or forming part uh, of the lesion. This lesion was well circumscribed with no evidence of epithelium despite of extensive uh, sectioning. And of course, we have to rule out the different types of low-grade sarcomas and including MP and ST, and this would be achieved by really looking for mitosis and ensuring that the tumor is not, not mitotically active. But we have also to confirm that this is Ischwannoma and the S100 was beautifully diffusedly positive in the tumor as was synaptophysin, which can sometimes be positive in Ischwannoma. So the final diagnosis of this beautiful case was a breast Ischwannoma and the patient actually was diagnosed in 2017. And until up to date, there is no evidence of recurrence of the lesion and the patient is completely free. I hope you find this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.